Rhythm Strummers, my name is Steve. That was a demonstration of claw hammer guitar technique. And what I'd love to do today is uh, show you what I was doing, get you started on the basic technique, because it's a really, really exciting way to play guitar. First of all, let me tell you what claw hammer guitar is not, because if you do an internet search, you're going to get to a lot of sites in England that tell you that claw hammer is this. We call, that's what we call Travis picking. That is not claw hammer. It's not that I have anything against the English. I love England. I've actually been there. Uh, crumpets and tea. Prince Charles. I like Prince Charles. I like that he married that gal who his mother didn't approve of. Um, Camilla, I think her name was. So England is cool, but when they say this is claw hammer, that's just not quite right. The best way to remember what claw hammer is is to picture your hand as a claw. Okay, right like this. Picture yourself also, say you're a farmer and you've just spent a few hours with a hoe, right? This kind of a hoe. So your hand looks like this. You go back home, you pick up your guitar, you cannot, your fingers are so stiff, you can't go back and sort of play Prince Charles kind of guitar. You're stuck with this. So what do you do? You do claw hammer. Claw hammer requires very little finger movement. And the obvious question comes up is, Steve, why on earth would anybody want to learn a guitar technique that requires you to imitate a crippled hand? And the answer is that it's powerful, it's innovative, it's versatile. There's so much you can do with it because you're playing, first of all, with downward motions, which are much more powerful than upward motions. And the really cool thing about it is your thumb, unlike the Prince Charles pick, the Travis pick, I'm sorry, your thumb is not on the downbeat. Your thumb is on the pickup to the downbeat. One and two, oh, one and two, oh, one and two, oh, one and two, oh, one. And two, oh, one. So, that allows you to play with an especially hard drive. And you can play mellow too, but you got that pickup happening on the thumb all the time, which is very cool and very unique. The way I encourage my students to think about claw hammer is the right hand, it's your motor. You got to get that motor purring along smoothly. Once your motor is purring, you bring the left hand in as your steering wheel, and you can steer to wherever you want to go. But first of all, you got to pay your dues and learn to internalize that basic pattern. And once you have this down, if you want to take a trip over to blues, you can do that. You want to go to country? You want to do... Uh, sort of uh, pretty folksy stuff. There's so much you can do with this, but the first thing you want to do is internalize that basic bum diddy, bum diddy, bum diddy, bum diddy. So if you'll get your guitars, I'll show you how to do it. First thing we're going to do is Three things I want you to know about this. A couple of them you already know. First is fingers don't flick around. Fingers are, you got that hoe hand, right? So notice from this camera angle here, from the close up, all I'm doing is down with the back of my middle, my index fingernail on the fourth string. I'm holding an E chord just for whatever. So all I'm doing is I'm hitting down on the second string twice, and then my thumb hits. Okay, so the first thing is you're just using the back of your index fingernail. There's no up picking, okay? Down, down thumb, down, down thumb. The other thing is no finger movement, no flicking. Once you start flicking and your thumb and fingers are floating around, you're going to lose the ergonomics and you're going to lose the groove. So down, down thumb. And the third thing you already know is that your thumb is on the pickup. One, oh, one, oh, one. So 
what I really would like is for you to do an E chord, get your hand in the position, and we start going down, down, thumb, down, down, thumb, bum, diddy. Banjo players call it bum diddy. And they know because this is a banjo technique. Bum diddy, bum diddy, bum. There's another thing I'd really like you to notice. I'm not moving my wrist. There's none of this. It's a full arm kind of motion. In fact, you want to feel it in your entire body. This is all about groove. Bum diddy. So once you have internalized this bum diddy, which by the way could take a long time. It took me two months. Uh, most people, it takes many hours of just sitting there doing this. But once you've internalized that bum diddy, you can start bringing your left hand in. So watch, I'm just going to start doing a simple hammer on and pull off on the four string. Now maybe I'll go up to the third string. Down to the fifth string. Maybe I want to hit two strings. I'm doing, I have to have a very steady motor that's just purring along. So before you get into any of that fancy left hand steering wheel stuff, make sure you got this happening. Okay? There's one little modification I'll show you that would be your next step, and that is rather than just hitting the fourth string on your way down, hit the fourth string on the bum, and then on the dit, strum. So bum. Gives you a fuller sound. You get some of those chords ringing out. And I'm strumming with all three of these fingers right here on the way down. Once you have that, it's really fun. It will change your life. It will make your life better. Make the world a better place. I hope you all learn how to do this, but first thing you do is pay your dues internalize this bum ditty. Make it your meditation for a while. And once you've got that and you can do it and talk at the same time, then you're ready to start doing this kind of stuff. So, have fun with that. Once you've mastered that basic pattern, if you want to learn more about this technique, I'm going to be putting up some uh, video lessons at rhythmstrummer.com. I'd love to see you there because I really think this is an exciting technique and I'd love to hear what you do with it. Thanks for tuning in.